guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm known as Kate the Bookworm or Sedona Rose and in today's episode is part three of It's the Voice from You series and today I have Mr. Winston James. So how are you doing tonight? I'm doing really well. How are you all doing? I'm good. Cannot complain. So I found you I followed you on Instagram first, and I noticed that you did a lot of spoken poetry, and every single one of them is amazing. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. And then I saw you again when Wesley, Benjamin, Charles, and um, Emmanuel did their segment, and you was G in the, uh, the little episode of Crave. And even though you didn't have, oh a, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah and even though you didn't have a speaking voice, uh, just the fans alone was just like, they they wish that they would have did your part. And I was like, hmm. Mm. First oh. now. So, um, my first two questions are: How did you get started, and why did you get started? Uh, well, I got started through uh, a friend of mine, Wesley Shabon. Mm -hmm. He um, introduced me to the world and said that they were looking for male voices. They needed more male voices to narrate novels. So um, <clears throat> I asked her about it. She told me about it. I listened to some of her stuff and some other people. And so I asked her what I had to do. And she began to coach me and taught me some things and then eventually referred me to, uh, she, I believe she referred me to my first job, if I'm not mistaken. And then that pretty much got the, the ball rolling after that. Um, what, was, what was the second question? Uh, the Sorry. second question is why? Why? Oh, okay. Uh, because, well, for me, I, I've been doing this about a year now. So I got started originally during the quarantine. Mm -hmm. And why would be because, um, you know, it was a, a good way for actors to make money and also a way to make work from home to make money from home um and the novels were really like you know the romance was really interesting to me um uh, I'm, I'm a a lover at heart i would say i'm <laughs> a, a lover not um that's me so you know when it when it became romance novels i was like sure this this interests me i would love to um be the voice of romance novels a, a voice for some romance novels so uh i said yeah that, so i guess that's the reason why okay cool yeah. so <laughs> during your um quarantine and like during the quarantine you said you guys started during that time um reading some of the books do you find like any challenges thinking like if you like read a scene and you like kind of like go back and listen to yourself you'd be like maybe i should have changed this word or said that word differently Sure, sure, definitely. As um just starting, yes, definitely, I was doing that uh, uh a few times, you know, because as as an artist, well, no one is a no one, nothing is perfect, right? So, mm -hmm. but as an artist, you still find things that you may want to do over or say, oh, I could have did this a little better, you know, or oh, or or as you go along, you also learn more things, so it becomes like, oh, you figured out, oh, okay. I see where I went wrong back then or did this piece here because I learned this from when doing this book. So totally, definitely, a lot of, definitely times like that. Have you had any books that are challenging? Like that was kind of like hard to get through. Uh, hard to get through. Um, I don't know if I said I, that I had books that were hard to get through per se. Uh, some more challenging than others, especially um, when I was first starting out initially, mm -hmm. like scenes had a lot of different characters in them, right? Mm -hmm. Those would be the most challenging. Even still to this day, honestly, scenes that have a lot of characters are the most challenging because you have to go back through all, you have to do so many voices, right? And it's not a thing where, like, let's say you're making a song like you're making music and you can go back and do this piece and then layer that piece on top of this piece and do it like that. You, you, you can't really do a book like that, you know? So you have to go through it all. Like you have to go from character to character as you narrate the chapter. You can't just say, okay, I'm only going to do John's parts 
then I'll go back and get Sarah's parts. Then I'll come back and get Nora's parts. No, you have to like literally go through and do the whole thing as you're moving along. So I would say that's the most challenging part for me. Okay, I understand that. So speaking of watching characters. Fun still fun. Sorry to cut you off. Sorry. Fine. Yeah, it's, it's still fun at the same time, you know, because um, cha- challenges are fun to me. So it's, it's still fun to, to tackle that, to, you know, get, get my, my hands around that. Good luck with that. I don't like challenges. Just give me something <laughs> plain and simple and we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> so when you do multiple characters, do you, how, I, I asked Ms. Macharis this last night. Um, when you do multiple characters, do you like listen back to how that particular character sounds so you won't keep the same like mento or do you just come up with like different sounds or different voices like off rip? Well, not off rip, but definitely um, I, I'll like in reading the book or preparing it, you know, I'll say, okay, I'll go through and say, okay, this person is like Max Kellerman, for instance, from ESPN, or this person is like Stephen A. Smith or, you know, Don Cheadle or whoever. And then I'll just basically kind of like, I don't want to say imitate that person, but act as if I was telling you a story and I was like, so then Don said, blah, 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 as if I was Don Cheadle, you know, so I'll, I'll mm-hmm. do the character like. That's interesting. Cause I always feel like when somebody does like a book by itself, I always wondered how that goes. Cause it's like I said, it's like, like you said, there's so many characters in the book that you really have to betray by yourself. Like you don't have somebody to do it with. So I always wondered that. Right. It was kind of cool. Understandable. Okay. So what book so far has been your favorite to record? Mm. For me, I always say um the last book I recorded or the book I'm currently working on is always my favorite to record because um you know you really have to enjoy the world to really record the book to give it its best. So I tend to try to enjoy every world, you know. Um, so I don't think I have one that is that I enjoyed more than another, so to speak. Okay, that's understandable. So what was the last book that you recorded? Uh, the last book I did was Iron Collar by okay. Susan D. Came out maybe a couple weeks ago. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, here's a good question. So with all the content that you've been doing, and I know some of the stuff has been spicy, huh. have you used any of the content that you read on your partners or potential partners? Uh, uh, um, let me see. Have I? Uh, <laughs> I possibly have, but not necessarily like on my partners. Maybe I may have used it on like an approach. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Or, or maybe I've used certain things to give me more confidence or the impetus to act on. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. No, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah. like you guys' voice, especially the men, and I can say you probably know you just started, but from what I saw on that live, you have a big time fan base. And I take it you're Caribbean. I am, yes. Oh, yes, because Kima B was just like, make him say my name as you're making like 50 million times before you got that line. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is I always miss the comments. I'm never like reading it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm always forgetting comments are actually happening and I catch them too late. No, I read it and I was just like, who is this man? Because like I said, I'm not really, I just started getting into audio. So I'm not really a big fan. I got into audio because of my uncle. So when he like put me on, I was just like, okay, I know I, I like it, I like it. So I feel like since you started in it like sorry this year and you're still technically you're still technically new, have you feel do you feel sometimes that or let me think of let me think of the right way to say this. Are there any other okay, boom. Are there any other like big time authors that you would love to work with? If so, sure. you know. Sure. I, 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 I'd love to work with uh, Christina C. Jones. 
Uh, I'd love to work with Kennedy Iron, um, nope. the Brain Tales. Uh, those three off the top of my head. Um, but there's a slew of authors I love to work with out <laughs> there. Yeah, totally. Okay, cool. So, would you be down? Okay, so you have to. I cannot talk today. Have you done a duet yet, or uh, basically, or a combination? Uh, like dual audio, like going yes. back. Mm -hmm. no, I haven't done that, but I've done you know split books as far as like you know I do this chapter and the, and the female narrator narrator do the next chapter, but I haven't done like dual audio like what we did the other night on uh, on to. Wow. Uh, on uh the live okay are you willing to do that are you down to do that uh sure i'd love to do that do you think that the characters would kind of be more to life if you guys were doing it at the same time or do you are are you somebody that likes to be by themselves and isolated and then like just let me do my own work and then we could go back um i i, I like both uh honestly I, and and i think that I think that the scenes with dialogue really pop when it's dual, when it's going back and forth with both characters. Um, so I like both from that. I, li I like it from that perspective. Of course, you know, the narration for a specific chapter, I think should be, you know, done. Uh, when I say narration, I mean the part that's not, you know, the dialogue. Mm -hmm. I think done, you know, on your own, in your own studio at your own time. But then the dialogue back and forth, could definitely be done with each other. I think I think that pops. It has like a, a, it really makes the text pop in a different way. It really turns it into uh, becomes like a movie in a way, like an audio movie for certain uh, chapters. That's one thing too I love about you guys is that when I listen to books, I like no when I read books alone by myself, I already see it in like I already seen the scenes in as a movie. So when you guys add the voice to it, it's just like you guys and I know you guys I know you probably hear this a lot, but you really make these characters come to life. Mm, thank you. You're welcome. And I know that's not a tough job to do. And I but have you had any negative reviews by like fans? Because uh, somebody was just don't... like um, for example, like if they have like a specific character that's like this is the voice in their head, and when they listen to the audio, they write you back like this is not how I thought this character was supposed to sound. I don't know. Um, I haven't. I may have had some, but I haven't read them. You know, they haven't left any on my on my page or anything like that. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. That's smart. That is very smart. If they didn't do that, because I sometimes I feel like far as readers they could get very very cruel oh wow yeah okay I, I i don't doubt it you know that's the, that's the, but that's the times that we live in you know what i mean mm -hmm. so kind of gotta you know uh protect yourself from those things if they if they are not good for your mentality that's very true i do agree with that so for someone who wants to become um an audio narrator what are like the, the steps or the processes that you think that they should do uh, first thing I would say they should do is definitely listen to audio books. Um, find someone that, that uh, find a few different narrators that they like and want to listen to and um, listen to what they do. Then practice on your own. Uh, find someone who could possibly coach you. I, I think the best thing to do is just keep working at it and, and get as good as you can. And in the meantime, start seeking employment uh, through whichever uh Avenue was best for you. Those are good questions. Those are good answers. Really good answers. So I want to play a game. Okay. I'm going to do this or that. This or that? Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, far as a reader, are you more romance or are you more uh, like a mystery type person? Or any other genre besides more romance? Romance. Okay. Uh, movie or TV shows? <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Um, I'm going to say TV show. Okay. Limited series or seasons? <laughs> seasons. Okay. Uh, comedy or drama? Or suspense? Drama. 
totally drama. All right. And from that, what are your top five TV shows of all time in drama area? All time? All time. Um, if I can make it to five, but let's see what I got. I got The Wire. Ooh, that's I, a classic. Yeah, totally. But that I have that as number one without a doubt. Uh, I have The Sopranos in there. Okay, another classic. TV shows of all time. Okay, I'm gonna go all my dramas. I've, I've, I have The Wire. I have The Sopranos. I have Martin. I have uh, The Cosby Show, and I have. Uh, let me see for fifth. Let me see. Give me a second. I said The Wire. I said Sopranos. I said Martin. I said Cosby. Fifth one. Um, top five. I'm gonna say a different world. Oh, okay. You got a good top five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have yeah. a great top five. I was just watching a different world last night. And I normally do me and my dad, we do uh like uh either we do a yearly watch, a rewatch of The Wire. From like, oh. from like season one, episode one to like the last episode all like of the season, of the series. Okay. I think I think maybe I've watched it maybe about three or four times myself, actually. Yeah. We watch a we do a yearly a, especially now that we got HBO Max, we do a yearly thing. <laughs> of, like, like we just got done like maybe like like I think like last month of like our yearly uh wire watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just because it's so, uh, it's just so good in this, like the actors, and I don't know, I just love it. And the fact that they never got any awards for it still makes me sick to this day. <laughs> still makes me upset. So, moving on from TV shows, what are your favorite top five movies? Top five movies. Okay. Uh, my favorite movies are Mo Better Blues. Um, but to, I guess that could lead into why I'd love romance novels. It's a yeah, love story. That is a that is a very true love story. Yeah, right. So I guess that helps define me. Uh so what I said, Mo Better Blues, um Boys in the Hood. Uh what else? Favorite movies. Oh, you, you got you might have got me there. But about <laughs> the TV. Let me see. Uh, Mo Better Blues, Boys in the Hood, um, Love Jones. Um. Oh, uh, oh man. Um, that was tough. Uh, Sugar Hill. Um, and maybe, maybe the five heart. No, coming to America. Sorry, coming to America. Probably. Okay. Me. Okay. So my top five. Love Jones is in my top five. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's the wood. Hands up. Uh, uh, love the wood. Love that movie to death. I know the whole entire movie. I could recite it by myself. Um, uh, love Jones, Best Man, Love and Basketball, and Brown Sugar. Oh, all love movies. Yes, I'm a huge no, romance buff. A- so, yes, those are my top five. So, you got, okay. we got a similar top five. I'm here for it. Hey, we got some similar tastes. Definitely. I'm here. I'm, we're here. I'm here. I was, for it. Yeah, I was just talking about the best man this morning, actually, to someone I was with. Yeah, so. Love, love, love that movie. So are there any others besides um, Wesley, Siobhan, that you would, like, Arthur-wise, that you will be willing to work with? Na- narrator-wise? Yeah, narrator-wise. I'm sorry. Narrator-wise. Oh, man. Everybody. No no one. Uh, I'm, I'm dying to work with everybody. Any, uh, whether it be male, uh, whether it be another, you know, uh, another male author, um, narrator, female narrator. I'm I'm down to work with everybody at this point. I love I love everybody's work that's out there. That's what's up. I, I love that you're so open to like you know op- like open to expand your horizons. Yeah, it's open. That, I think that's amazing. I think that is definitely amazing. Well, I don't have any more questions. I'm so tapped out today. Uh, I saw good. This has been awesome. But I appreciate you joining me. Thanks for having me so no much. No problem. Um, before we leave, I want to know, do you have anything that is coming up in the works for next year or, or for the rest of this year or next year that you could talk about? Nothing that I can talk about per se, but definitely some things in the works. Uh, I can also just say, you know, check out for um, Slow Down Sundays, you know, and I drop some poetry. I'm going to drop some stuff tomorrow. So 
check that out on my Instagram page at, uh, at Winston underscore James underscore one okay. on Instagram. Um, so, yeah, look out for that. And then I'll definitely be posting what's to come. Oh, that's I'm glad you brought that up. So your poetry, what made you want to do Slow Down Sundays every Sunday? Because I think the one that I listened to was the Mother's Day one and the Chocolate Thighs one. Yeah. And that Chocolate Thighs one had me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what made me want to do it? Um, what made me want to do it? I, I think I just started dropping it. I, 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 you know, I'm a writer, so... I think I just wanted to put it out there, and it was it was when I was just creating the the Winston James IG page. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be a great way for people to know me, you know. Well, you keep doing what you're doing because your your spoken word is so beautiful. Thank you. I do a little. I did a little spoken word back in the middle school, uh, high school, and college, but it's nowhere close to where you're at. So you're not. I did maybe you know a little uh, a little bit of open mics, but nothing to compare to that. So. <laughs> So I don't necessarily do much uh, spoken word per se. I kind of just do my poetry and I just uh, release it out like that. This is the first time that I've kind of released it in this form because mm-hmm. I'm not a, a spoken word artist per se. More gotcha. just a. Were you surprised at the outcome when you posted your poetry? I think I was definitely. <laughs> I wasn't sure what the outcome was going to be, but I, I was definitely pleasantly surprised yes indeed got you got you well guys that is all for this episode once again winston james thank you so much for joining me i hope to work with you again soon or interview soon um like i said i am an author so i do plan to do some audio in the near future so if you get an email from me just be on the lookout look forward to it just want to say that uh guys uh Make sure you get my book, which is currently out right now, called The One. It's on Amazon Paperback and uh, Kindle Unlimited. Uh, Thank you guys for watching. Once again, like, comment, subscribe, the whole nine yards. If you're watching, if you're listening to it on my Brutal Honesty podcast, thank you guys. I know I've been gone for a hot minute, but I plan to release another episode of why I've been gone and what's to come for the rest of the year and on to next year. Until next time, read what you love, write what you, uh, read what you love. Write what you want to read. Have faith, have confidence, love you, always be you. And talk to you guys later. Bye. All right, later. Mm-hmm.